Hello there! Welcome to my guide about water wheels for Dwarf Fortress. In this video I'm going to explain how to set up a functioning water wheel, how to use the power transmission, and I'm going to explain how they work, what to take care of that they work, and all these little details. So before we get started, the requirements. We will require some wood for the water wheel, wood for the power transmission parts, and some mechanisms. That's pretty much it. The other thing we require is flowing water. One way or another, you need flowing water. The easiest acquirable source of flowing water is a river. That's why we're using it for this tutorial. If you don't have access to a river, you need to set up your own flow one way or another, but that would really bloat this video. So once we have all that, we need to set up the water wheel. So you can put it directly into the water, as you see here. If we would put it here on the land, it wouldn't work either because, you know, it needs water. So to fix that, we're going to need one axle right next to the middle point of the water wheel to be. And this is uh, now designated. Now we can set up the water wheels blueprint even after creating the ghosted blueprint for the axle. So it needs support from a neighboring tile and then it can be assigned. This can also be a ear assembly. This would work as well. So let's wait until this thing is set up and uh, then you can go for power production. That's pretty much all of uh, all that we require. So our dwarfs will have the last lock in a second and now it's up to us to transport the produced power there as you might have already have noticed there so here we go it's uh, flowing now a water wheel has certain power production and it has a certain power need it does consume 10 power all on its own so to say and every piece of axle is amping up the costs by one so Every, every piece of uh, connection we put up is consuming a part of the power because, you know, power gets lost if you transport it too far away. So we're going to lengthen that axle, though, to make it go over here. Oh, that's already a little bit too much, so we can shorten that a little bit. One cool thing about this is I want to show you because it doesn't you don't need to have it that uh, uncomfortable. You can just scroll downstairs like that while building and check it out okay so and the next thing we require is going to be some way of transporting the power downstairs so to make that happen first off we're going to open up the floor here via the channeling to command because to transport power downstairs the floor is in the way and then we set up a gear assembly which can hang in the air and the gear assembly is kind of like a uh, like a connector so from the t from that part here from the gear uh, from the gear assembler on we could now have axles go this way on the same axis or we can use the vertical axle and get the power transmitted downstairs so if we build a vertical axle down there let's check it out Just take a moment until it's constructed. You see, it's rotating, so it's receiving power from above. But we actually don't want an axle here. We want to put up a millstone down here. So by putting the millstone directly under the uh, gear assembly, it will get connected directly to that. So the gear assembly is transmitting the power in that regard. Every part that receives power one way or another can give power also away. So uh, just to give you a little example there, we're going to put up some axle right next to the millstone. So you see the millstone is rotating, it's receiving power from above, but you could now also go over there and transport further power away from that thing. And that's a pretty simple and easy setup. That's all behind it. So I want to talk about a few technical details now next. The thing is, water flow. This is a little bit odd, isn't it? I'm, I'm taking this and th th this shouldn't work. I personally think it shouldn't work, but it does so. Why is that so? 
So for the sake of the game's logic, and we need to dive into the game's logic to begin understanding why this works, this river is an endless water source. You cannot ever deplete it. It will have a permanent new supply of water from here and the water will ex exit always into that direction and by connecting this uh, little channel of water here with that endless water source as long as it's on the same height level same same elevation level the game considers this now connected to the flow yes because these tiles are flow part of the flow and it's an endless water source basically this is just getting filled up and endlessly filled up and well, you need to bend your brain a little bit to make to accept that this is actually a flow what's really important to note is if you have this uh, gap here only three tiles wide it won't work and there has to be water right next to the ends of the water wheel to work for this little scheme here so the other way would be to produce legit flow so if you if you'd be if you'd be a sucker for realism, you could be also just uh, digging it out like that. I know that ain't too realistic either, but uh, you know you get the idea. The water flow system of Dwarf Fortress is a thing on its own. The gist of it is, as long as the slit of water you want to power your water wheel with is connected to flow flowing water that's flowing on the same height level which is really incredible important because flow is not necessarily transported uh, from height level to height level exactly the same that's the way how you can put up a simple water wheel above ground if you have a piece of uh, of river available there are more intricate versions of making that go underground but i want to cover that in a separate tutorial video because i think this already explains how water wheels work how to get a water wheel and a water flow underground that's a topic for its own video so thanks for watching everybody i hope that helped you out if there are any questions still left feel free to ask away if you have anything to add to this Feel free to add into this video's uh, stockpile. I really, really appreciate you guys are adding so many cool details to everybody's knowledge base. I deeply, deeply appreciate. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed and consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. There is daily content coming up from my side and chances are you like the rest of the stuff I do as well. And if you want more Dwarf Fortress tutorials, you find a link to the entire playlist of the stuff I did down below in the description box. And also a big, big thanks to the supporters of this channel. You are truly outright amazing and I'm so grateful for all the things you already did there. Thanks for that. And if you want to support as well, there's a couple of links down there in the description box too. So thanks for watching through all of this and have a wonderful day.